women in technology still are the minority. There's no getting around that. And I think that is from a technical standpoint and a marketing or support standpoint within the technology world. Right. I tell them always, bring yourself, show up and bring yourself. Hi, I'm Deirdre Breckenridge. I've spent my entire career helping women to get unstuck, to share their stories, nurture relationships, and to grow their brands. But most of all, to find their voices so they can make a difference. Women Worldwide features the stories of passionate women and the ups and downs of their journeys. With deep insight and advice, let Women Worldwide ignite your passion so you can excel in life. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for showing up wherever you are in the world, whether you're listening to us on iTunes or you're watching us on YouTube. Thank you. And thank you for helping to grow our network. As you know, we are officially in our fifth year of Women Worldwide, and we have grown so much, and we're so close to 2 million downloads. We're going to be doing a lot of fun initiatives this year uh, to celebrate Women Worldwide's fifth anniversary. Uh, but you know our mission. It's always changing lives one story at a time. We try to bring the guests on the show who they show up, they share their passion, but they also share the ups and downs of what they go through in business and life. And it's all to help you. We never want you to feel like you're alone. So let me get to today's topic and special guest. The topic is be bold now. <laughs> now there are lots of ways to be bold. And one way is to share stories. And when it comes to moving gender parity across the globe, sometimes those stories have to be fearless and relentless and yes, bold. And that is the perfect segue to my guest today. Joining me on the show is Kate Eisler. And Kate brings over 20 years of international executive leadership experiences. And that's from working within Fortune 100 companies to startups. And Kate has spent many years working and living in different countries for Microsoft where she honed her business and leadership skills by opening up subsidiary offices and marketing organizations in developing economies. So she was in the Middle East, in India, in Africa, in China. And when she came back to the US, she led the international marketing organization and campaign teams for Microsoft Windows. Now, Kate is also the co-founder and CEO of an organization called Be Bold Now. And the mission is to build an intersectional community of women who inspire and empower one another and really to accelerate gender parity across the globe. So I could say so much about Kate, but I think it's time she shares her story with you. Kate, welcome. Welcome to Women Worldwide. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, it's so nice. Did, did I get everything right <laughs> in your intro? <laughs> you did. I kind of, when I hear that, I think, who did that? <laughs> How could that be? <laughs> you did. And that's why we're so excited to talk to you and to hear your story. Um, I mentioned that you were at Microsoft, um, an executive, and you turn the page to Be Bold Now. And I, you know, I, I think everybody wants to know what led to that and, and why be bold now? <laughs> a couple of things. You know, um, Microsoft gave me a tremendous opportunity in life. I learned so much. I kind of think, you know, I was an adult when I worked there, so I was not just out of school, but it taught me so much and gave me so much experience around the world and opened my eyes. You know, I was um, in lots of places in the world that, um, you know, women were not traditional business people. And so right. I was generally the only one in the room. I think of it like I was all in the highly desirable places. I mean, who needs Paris and London when you can have Beijing and Rio and, <laughs> um, and Botswana? <laughs> yeah. um, but I just, 
you know, I started to think about all the, the questions I got from women around me and men around me. And one of them, you know, as I spent my time traveling around the world, I have three children and a husband that always went. And people said to me, did you bring your family when we live in different places? And I thought that was such an odd question. I was like, of course I brought my family. You know, would you ask any man? Right. You know, did you, did you bring your family? Of course I did. And so it, it just started to become, you know, I started to share my story with people and say, I, you know, women and men, anyone can do any of this work if you put your mind to it. And so I, you know, worked at Microsoft and came back to the U.S. and just felt like, you know, we we were missing a beat. And so I actually left Microsoft and ran a digital health startup for a little while because I thought, oh, you know, how hard can this be? It's a small company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got another dose of reality saying, you know, how difficult it is for women to succeed in the startup world and how difficult it is to raise money. And, you know, it just occurred to me, you know, we've got, there's got to be more. And all along the way, I had a very good friend from Europe and who asked me, why don't we celebrate International Women's Day? I had no good answer. And right. so we decided to do it. And it just grew from um, the first event that we did five years ago. We had 80 people and we have done, we, this will be our fifth event in, October, in March this year. And we're over 500 people. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Some great strides. What do you tell other women um, when and if they feel alone in a room? Because you mentioned that. Well, I think, you know, women in technology still are the minority. There's okay. no getting around that. And I think that is from a technical standpoint and a marketing or support standpoint within the technology world. Right. I tell them always, bring yourself, show up and bring yourself. I think there's a lot of discussion about how women should act in a setting. And, you know, I tell them, you know, tell yourself how much you fit in, that you have every right to be there and bring your whole being. And I believe that that's one of the things that Be Bold really wants to stress is that we're not going to tell women how to behave because I think one of the things that makes women successful is being ourselves and the uniqueness that we bring. Right. And I tell women, you know, reassure yourself. You know, I think these, you know, we could talk forever about the self-talk that we all do and we are not good enough and we shouldn't be there. And, you know, even when you read my introduction, I was like, Oh, really? You know, of course. Yes. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. And so, you know, and find a community, find your council that will tell you that, that you can call and say, is this really, you know, can I do this? Can I be there? Find those people. That's really good advice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk a lot about diversity, um, diversity in the workplace. I just had a, a guest on, we talked about diversity in corporate catering, but there is um, an inclusion part. So what do you say to this and what does this mean to you when you pair together diversity and inclusion? I think they're very different. I think it's great that you've pointed that out because diversity is, you know, bringing together different people. But inclusion is, you know, you can have all kinds of people sitting in a room, but if they're not all participating, they're not included and you're not right. getting the benefit of that. And one of the things that I learned um, through my time working in diverse cultures was listening is the key mm. you know and I think that we are so apt to want to speak and say give everyone a turn you know one of the big success factors in diversity and inclusion is to listen to those diverse opinions listen to those perspectives and then try and incorporate that and I, you know I spend a lot of time I am sort of I want to say um enthusiastic and I kind of get passionate about things that I want to move forward and I spend a lot of time thinking let me just listen and figure out how that would happen and so when I talk to businesses about inclusion I you know really stress how do you listen and how do you incorporate because you know you can talk about including you and we really care and we but you're then again talking versus listening right and so I do a bunch of exercises when I, when I do workshops to say, 
let's listen and let's figure out how, what that would be like to listen and incorporate some of that feedback versus just nod your head and say, oh yeah, I hear you. What do you think stops leaders from actually pairing the two together naturally? So if you're going into organizations and you're helping them and you're doing exercises and clearly it starts with listening, do you see anything common that might be the roadblock or why wouldn't you want to do this naturally? Because it's two things, I think. One, it's change. And it's okay. something, you know, as a leader, you think you're always supposed to be in charge and you're supposed to be out front and you're supposed to be talking. That's what leadership in, you know, most of our businesses today, we define that. You know, um, I've heard lots of women talk about, I can't be promoted unless I lead a team of people. I can't unless people, you know, and it, you know, to me, leadership is not about being in front. It's about having people want to follow you. And that's a really different piece that's a really different place and so leaders don't want to change because that's their style and that's what they've been taught and that's how we are um, recognized and actually compensated occasionally and I think that they are in such a hurry to get their perspective and and to be heard and to be you know seen as brilliant Right. That they forget that, you know, the, the old adage of hire people who are smarter than you. It's yeah. really, <laughs> and it's confidence. And right. I see that in women as well. You know, I think women display that confidence, but they're quiet about it. And I mm -hmm. do believe that that's one of the things that if you look at very successful women, at the end of the day, that's why they're successful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So some of the, I want to pivot back over to Be Bold Now, because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the stories that are told, are you, um, some of those stories are probably really powerful. Do you see any common themes among women who are speaking out and what they're experiencing? And I know you're also writing a book. <laughs> so I want to yeah. mention that. <laughs> Um, a couple of things. I do see absolutely common themes. Um, we all think that we're the only one that have a particular feeling, that we're the only one that sit in a crowded meeting room and think, oh, I don't have anything to add, so they're not going to take me seriously. Or, you know, we all think that. And when we start to tell our story and give examples, we really realize that all of us feel the same way. And I would venture to say lots of men feel the same way. When you start to talk to them, they go, Oh yeah, that's actually common. It's more human than you know than than not. And I think that you know there's there's two things with those stories. So you get the common theme of the imposter, or mm. do I really do I really have the skills to do this? And how do I you know how do I make my way? The other thing is you know I am big on inspiring women because once we hear those stories, we think, oh, she can do it. I can do it. And right. so when I tell my story, you know, people say, wait, you have you had three kids and you moved them when they were in junior high and high school. And I'm like, I did. I did all the wrong things. Okay, yeah, you like, moved them to the Middle East and to Africa and places, yeah. right? I did. Yeah. I did. And, you know, and I will happily say that they are all grown and very healthy and they're all people of the world. They are, yes. you know, and they are very sensitive to a much broader perspective than I think most young people. And so I'm very right. proud of that. But I, you know, if you think about telling those stories, women tend to assume out, you know, they, we self-select out and we self-select out for lots of reasons. And I've heard it be, I don't have connections. I didn't come from a wealthy family. I didn't go to the right school. I have children, I, you know, and I just, my, my, counsel always is take two steps back and identify what you'd like to do and then start to move on that path. I asked my husband, would you quit your job and move to the Middle East? And he originally said I was completely not I really <laughs> that was one of those oh, moments. Wife, yeah. I can't imagine the choice of words. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, okay, really, have you hit your head? Yeah, did you turn and fall down? <laughs> and it was 25 years ago, and I was definitely not, you know, there were definitely not trailing husband spouses in the sure. Middle East. And, you know, <laughs> no. he had, yeah, we had, you know, both grown up in very traditional roles. And, 
actually we had been out of the country twice before oh that and so we did Big it we did bold it. move <laughs> <laughs> i now go oh my gosh i can't believe but you know we just decided why not you know all the barriers were you know, we had a house, we had jobs, we had good, you know, but why not? And I am right. a very, there's always why not barriers, person. you know, always, mm -hmm. but you have to seize the moment. Kate, when you say self select out, do mm -hmm. you mean you um, just move away from an opportunity so that some, because you don't think that you would be able to achieve something? Is that what you mean by self select out? It is. I think women do that. They just, you know, you hear the statistics of, you know, if they're not qualified for nine out of the 10 things on the list, they won't apply. We're a man. And I, exactly. And, you know, I will be really honest. I, <laughs> at, not even, yeah. um, you know, I went to, I, I went to work for Microsoft and raised my hand for all kinds of things just because. I love it. And, you know, I am a 2018 mm. college graduate, so I was not well educated. I didn't get my college degree until after I left the company. I did not come from lots of wealth. I was a, you know, and I was first generation college person. And so, you know, it was a really, I don't know. I just decided, well, I can do that. And, and it was wow. one of those things I saw um, mostly men, but truly saw people doing things that I really wanted to do. And I was like, well, I really want to do that. And why not? Wow. I mean, that's, you're, you're an inspiration, right? More people. Why, why can't I do that? Instead of, I can't, why can't right. I, why shouldn't I? It's there right. for me. Absolutely. It's there to try. To try. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so much more that we need to talk about. Um, I'm just going to ask you to hold your thoughts mm -hmm. just for a moment. We're going to shift our focus over to the sponsor of today's show, which is the Empowered Women event that's taking place in San Francisco on December 5th. And women from across the country are going to gather to share their experiences as women in business and also why equity matters. And on that note, <laughs> Kate, I wanna ask you a question. How can women support one another or what advice can you give to women up to help one another because equity does matter. Equity does matter. That is a that is a simple statement that is so powerful because we are half of the population. We are half, and we have um, we have again, you know, and I would say we have isolated and been isolated from one another for so long that I think we forget to support one another. You know, we are not going to agree with how we approach things or how, you know, um, our perspective on things, but we are a community and we are strong together. And there is room for all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and creating equity takes all of us from all walks of life. And it, it takes us to, you know, kind of link arms and move forward. And I always think, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, there's not enough room for us and the whole adage of not enough chairs at the table. My thought is bring your own, bring a chair, bring, bring a folding a chair. chair, sit down, you know, oh push in. And, and women, we owe it to one another to let you in. Right. And I think for so long, there's been such a competitive air that if we all get together and decide, you know, we, you know, we're not competing with one another. Nope. We should be, you know, lifting one another up at all costs. And, you know, not to say there are, there is bad behavior everywhere, right. but I would say, <laughs> don't do it, you know, as much as, you know, as much as it's hard, sometimes don't do it. And I think the Empower Women event is a wonderful event because the speakers in that event oh. are shining examples of women who are, you know, coming together as a community and that are all passionate and really bold. I am... I love that speaker lineup. I'm excited about it. Oh, I'm excited too, because Dr. Deborah Tannen mm -hmm. is going to take the stage and she's a best-selling author of the book, You're the Only One I Can Tell. Uh, Pat Gillette is a motivational keynote speaker who focuses on diversity and women's issues in business. She's gonna be there. Whole, I'm honored 
to also participate as a speaker. I'm so excited. I'm going to be kicking off the morning um, talking about a new communications model that's based on a year of research. It's called Feel, Face Your Fears, Engage with Empathy, Use Ethics and Good Judgment, and Unleash the Love. Because I think that women leaders and women in business need to embrace this natural tendency to feel <laughs> we have it it's a gift and to and to help mm -hmm. others so thank you so much for answering mm -hmm. that question about how equity matters and what women can do make room for one another and for anybody who is interested in attending the december 5th event in san francisco uh, there's still tickets and there is room <laughs> for you. So I'm going to say the URL, but certainly um, if you want to find out more about the event, you're going to find it in the show notes. You'll also find it in the description on YouTube, but you can go to http colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash empowered DEC five and DEC is short for December. So Kate, thank you for answering the question. Mm -hmm. and I wanna give a big thanks to the organizers of the Empowered Women event for sponsoring this episode of Women Worldwide. All right, Kate, let's jump back into our discussion. Now, I did mention your book, and I don't know how much mm -hmm. you can or can't talk about it, but did you wanna say a few words about how the book came together or is coming together? I would love to. Right. Um, the book has come together. It is, we're waiting for a published date, but it is really um, my story. It's a memoir. And it is really, you know, the story of um, how I sort of move forward. Again, you know, just, I've always been a little bit of a chance taker. And I, it's good, bad, and ugly. You know, I talk about some very spectacular failures. And so, because I think, you know, in the, in the course of a career and in the course of the life, it's not realistic to have a forward moving trajectory all the time. And I think that's okay. And I think we forget to, to recognize that every time we take a few steps back, it kind of empowers us. And so, that's really yeah. important. Thank you. I mean, I really have had spectacular, you know, I can t show you the bumps on my head from beating them into my desk and, you know, just it, it happens. But, you know, the, the trick is to continue to move forward. And so the, the book is a memoir about, you know, my from young adult life and the crazy things like coming home and asking my husband, how do you feel about quitting your job? And, <laughs> and you know, the, the um, parenting too, you know, I listen to people talk about how they're spectacular children. I have three spectacular children who have made mistakes and are real children and have right. had hard times. And, you know, um, anyone who has raised them, the parents don't always agree on how to do that. And, you know, that impacts you. And the book is about stories about that. But really, at the end of the day, it's about being a whole person. And yes. I show up all the time with all of me and all of me, meaning, you know, I am. I don't spend a whole lot of time sharing pictures in meetings, but gosh, I have a family and that's part of a, a lot of who I am and w what I brought to the table instead of separating them very binarily between, oh, well, this is my work face and this is my home face. This is me. And so I talk a lot about that and just, you know, sort of quirky lessons, some real life business insights that I got and, you know, some that were, you know, just silly stuff that, <laughs> being in foreign cultures that you don't consider that wow. I learned. Yeah. I can't wait to read your book. <laughs> Do you have any idea of when it will be published or that's still a TBD? It's still a TBD. Um, it's being edited right now and it's, okay. um, it will be published by Harper Collins Leadership. That's and so it's so kind of in the process. And this is a whole new, you know, talk about be bold. It's a whole new process for me. I had written the book, um, I had started it and was about three quarters of the way through when I met with them. And it was very much a cathartic book. I kind of had to work through some things in my life and looking back and kind of recounting how my journey was so inspiring to me and so healthy to kind of think, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, but I made it through that. Or 
that was something really good and I need to, you know, replicate that behavior. And I'm a huge proponent of examining your own situation for good and bad, because I would imagine yes. it will be uplifting for you when you start to recognize some of the things that you've actually accomplished. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned lessons um, and, mm -hmm. you know, the self-reflection and the, the good things that happened and the not so good. Are there any moments, lessons that really stand out any, at any point in your career that just truly helped you to pivot forward? Oh, absolutely. Um, a couple of them. I, you know, one as I, one was a story actually of a um, guy that worked at Microsoft who was, you know, kind of part of the guys club. Yeah. And was it, you know, if you sort of close your eyes and think, oh my gosh, is that going to be a young, successful man? He was the picture of. And he moved to Paris. And I went, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I can do that. And that was truly when I, changed my whole life and oh. I thought you know I that's a moment do that it was a moment and the, I will never forget sitting at my desk reading the reading the email announcement thinking I have all those skills and I have all that ambition and I am going to do it and so very pointed moment and and you know there's been some huge mistakes i um have made decisions that i've gotten in big trouble for oh. <laughs> and big mistakes and miscalculations and you know kind of there's a couple of those that i talk about in the book where it's one of those moments where your stomach drops and you think oh my gosh and i think you know one of the things that i went through was to say you know this could really ruin me both mm -hmm. mentally and professionally, or I can choose, you know, to make a path forward. It's a choice. And that, that's it really is a important choice. that you said that. Mm -hmm. It is a choice. And even if it's bad, you know, there are times where I've had to go and say, I made this multi-million dollar mistake. And, you know, I, I'm going to own that. And, and the other piece I would say it's really important is ask for help. So many women think that that bit of vulnerability is, you know, a, a nail in your coffin. And it is so not. Asking for help is, I think, the biggest sign of strength. Right. Where do you go to ask for help? What does that look like? Is that a, a network? Is that within your own company? Maybe share some thoughts there. Sure. There's a couple of things. I have um, a council which I, you know, and I have a couple of counsels and I, and I think that that's a very distinct thing from a mentor. You know, I have mentors too, but yeah. my counsel of people is, you know, who I care about and who I care that makes, uh, you know, that impacts my, who I believe can add to that. They may not have the solution. And I think that's a really different thing is, you know, I have my work counsel that I go to, and one is my business partner in Be Bold. One is certainly my husband, because I think that's mm -hmm. a life counsel. And he's, you know, he's not in my day to day, and he can't solve for me, but he can counsel me. He, you know, does this feel right? Does this feel, and I, you know, Your I encourage. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Some does days. Does this feel right? Oh my gosh, he was my favorite word. <laughs> right? And I think that we, you know, you need to voice that. And I have, you know, another two or three women that are super important to me and their opinion matters mm. and, you know, their opinion and their guidance. And I think that that is the thing. Um, it isn't the, here's how you solve your particular problem. It's how do you feel about the solution that you're working towards? How are you going about that? Have you thought about these things and that solution? Which that to me is the counsel because then you have an opportunity to go back and go, hmm, well, that was sort of good until they mentioned this. And, <laughs> and so I do have a counsel and it is a network and they are not, um, some of them are people that I've met in business. Some of them people that I've known for a long time, but it's five people. And so it's not a huge one. And that, you know, that changes but if it's a okay. personal issue. Yeah. yeah. There's a few of them I change out if it's a very personal issue. Sure. 
That's fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't even believe that we're to the point of the show where I ask you the advice question. <laughs> so, to, you know, just to round it out, what advice can you give to all of those women worldwide listeners and folks who are watching about how they can be bold and kind of take bigger steps and do what they need to do to make a difference? So I am a big proponent of having a goal. You know, whether that's how you want to live your life, how you, what the job you want, the type of experience you want, have that and figure out, you know, what do you need to get there? Go through an exercise, which I think about as bold as what are the lies that you tell yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, and what are the decisions you have to make to get there? So what's the bold thing? What's the bold goal? What's the opportunity? You know, what would what would that look like for you? What's the great opportunity? What are the lies you tell yourself about it? And what are the decisions you have to make to get there? And write it down because even if you share it with no one, the act of writing it down makes it real. And, you know, I think that those sort of bold moves and that bold exercise can change all the time. I mean, mine two years ago would be very different than mine is today. And, you know, I think that people get, you know, women, we decide we can't do things or it's too overwhelming. Take it in pieces and say, mm -hmm. what is that bold thing I want to do right now? And how do I get there? And just make a plan. And don't be afraid to do it. Share it or don't share it. And then the, the final thing certainly would be find a council. You know, not a huge, it's not a vote. <laughs> find people that you care about that, you know, you trust their insight. And enlist their help. Raise your hand and say, what do you think of this bold move I'm about to make or I'd like to make? Awesome. That's ah. such great advice. <laughs> Kate, oh my gosh, thank you so much for your advice. And last question, super easy. Where can everybody find out more about you and Be Bold Now and all of your great work? So we have a, a URL that we'll put in, I hope, in the show notes yep. also, um, that is um, Be Bold Now, and it's B-B-O-L-D-N-O-W dot com. And so that really talks about our organization. It talks a little bit about me, and we're, you know, as my book comes closer, we'll talk more about that. But, Yay. you know, I am all <laughs> over that site. And, you know, I want your stories. I want women's bold stories. And so I am very willing to talk with anyone about them. Um, so there is a submission page on our, our website for their bold stories or reach out or information. And so I am absolutely connected to that. And, you know, I, there's three of us that look at that site every single day. And so I would love to continue the conversation with them because I think, again, you know, we need to lock arms and move forward, all of us together. Love it. Lock arms, move forward. Kate, thank you so much for sharing your journey and so much great advice. I'm, I'm still stuck on the pull up the chair and make room, <laughs> right? Lock on right. all really, really important insights. And just thank you for being on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. You're an inspiration. My pleasure. It was fun. Oh, I hope good. to talk to you guys again. And I can't wait for December 5th. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't wait for December 5th, but also you have to come back on the show when your book is published. I will <laughs> so we'll, we will talk more. So thank you. And thank you to everybody for showing up, for tuning in, for watching on YouTube. We so appreciate you. We hear you. Uh, we take your feedback to heart. We're bringing the guests that help you every day to kind of tackle your challenges. And you know what? Keep that feedback coming. Please uh, leave a comment on Facebook, on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. You know, I'm always on Twitter at Deep Breckenridge. And be sure to sign up for the Women Worldwide updates. You can go to womenworldwideshow.com and you can sign up for updates there. So friends, until our next episode, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. <laughs>